Now that we've got cell references at just kind of a high level, an introductory level, I know some of you have been using them forever. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us are newer into the system. Very important, a very important foundational building block that makes up our Excel experience. Make sure that that's comfortable. If you got any questions on it, again, jump into the Q&A section, ask your questions there, right? I'm right there. I love answering questions. I love seeing what everybody is learning. It's great. So now that we got cell references down, let's take a look at building basic calculations. Nothing big here. We're going to do some math. Now, for me, math was never my strong suit. You know, going through school, it was like that period of the day that I just wanted to be somewhere else, right? Doing addition, subtraction, multiplication. When I got into algebra and whatnot, then my mind just exploded. What is going on here? Well, the nice thing is, as long as we know what we want to do, I want to add some numbers. I want to do some multiplication. I want to do some division. As long as we understand what it is that we want to do and what we want our outcome to be, Excel will do the math for us. It's like a calculator on steroids. It can do so much for us. Now we're gonna start out with the basic building block once again. Understanding basic formulas, basic mathematical operators performed inside of an Excel spreadsheet. And then as we continue through the course, we're gonna get into more and more and more advanced topics as far as formulas, functions, and calculations are concerned. So let's start out with some basics here. All right. So I want to be able to start out with a calculation that gives me the sum, and we're going to do some addition here, some sum of January. Give me the total for January. Now give me the total for February, for March, and so on. Now here's where the prior lecture comes into play. Take a look. I'm going to jump into cell B9. That's my total for January. Now we talked about a couple of different types of data that you can input into an Excel document. You had text or alpha characters, you had numeric, you had dates. Now here's a fourth one. We can input what Excel considers formulas or calculations. Now in order for Excel to recognize that what you're about to do or what you're performing here is a calculation, you start your calculations with a specific character. In this case, I'm gonna start it with an equal sign. This is true from the most basic, like what we're about to do here, to the most advanced calculation that you can perform inside of Excel. You start them with an equal sign. All right. So I got my equal sign. Excel's now, okay, ready. Here we go. I'm in a great calculation. So I got my equals. Now I want to be able to add up those numbers for January. Well, I could do this. I could say, okay, rent. Rent for January is a thousand. One, one, two, three. There's my thousand. Now, what type of math am I going to do here? Well, I want to add this up. I want to get a sum. So I'm going to say plus, what's my next one? 100 plus 150 plus 300 plus 100. All right, I'm just doing math. I've told Excel, there's my equal sign that, hey, I'm going to do some math here. This is going to be a calculation. And I'm just taking the numbers and performing some addition on those numbers. Once I'm done, I hit my enter key. And there's my results, $1,650, $1,650 for the month of January for my various bills. What do you think? Did you get it? Equals this plus this plus this plus this. Now, some of you are thinking, well, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work, right? I mean, if I double click that cell again, $1,650, double click, that opens the formula back up. I typed out each of those numbers, right? What if I made a mistake? What if I put one too many zeros or I left a zero out, right? Now I'm at 10,650. Oops, i get back in there. i get rid of that zero, right? Hit my enter key. I made the correction, but it's a lot of work. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. What happens, what happens if these numbers here update? What if I get back here and say, oh wait, I spent $125 on my phone bill on January. It wasn't $100. So I get in here, I change this from $100 to $125. Oops. Hit my enter key. I updated it there. But did it update there? Nope, it didn't update. Double click, it's still at the $100. So now I'd have to change this. 
Now it's correct, right? Now I'm changing it in two different places. Well, you remember the previous discussion that we had, right, on cell references. Let's get rid of this. Let's put this back to 100. Let's get rid of this. This is crazy. I'm just going to delete that. Crazy. We could do it that way. Definitely. You just saw it, right? Equals this value plus this value plus this value. We could do that. Or, all right, back to B9. Start our formula. We're going to inform Excel that we're creating a calculation. Equals. Put our equal sign in there. Now I'm going to use the cell references. So the first one, we're in the B column, 1,000, it's in B4. So I'm going to say B4 plus B5 plus B6. Now, ever since the 2000 edition of Excel, we've got some nice color coding going on here. Very, very slick. Something small, but very helpful. Plus B7 plus B8. Now I'm just referencing cells, right? B4. Take the value of what's inside of location B4, cell address B4, and add that to B5. Then add that to B6. Once you're done, hit your enter key. There's our answer, 1650. Now if one of them updates, we go for, oh no, no, it was 125. 125 for phone for January. Hit my enter key, keep an eye down here. Hit my enter key, and I've now updated the formula all because I'm using cell references instead of the literal values. What do you think? Pretty slick, right? And all I'm doing is just some math here. I'm doing some, addi some addition. You can do whatever type of math. You can do your subtraction, your multiplication, your division, whatever it is, right? Now, I want you to take a moment. Take a moment. I want you to complete the rest of them. Get some practice in here. Right, jump over to C9, add that up. Jump over to D9, add up March. Then I want you to hop up to the E column, create a formula. You start it with what character? Equals, and then we're just gonna use the cell references. So in this case, it's gonna be B4, which is my thousand rent for January, plus C4, which is for the month of February, plus D4. So now I've got my three values there for rent. I'll hit my enter key, and I'm just doing some addition, some simple math here. So try this out, complete that, get a feel for it. I'm gonna take it even a step further. I know some of you are waiting for some other methods on how to complete this, because this is still pretty, pretty intensive, right? We've only got four or five records there, but what if you had hundreds or thousands of records? I definitely don't wanna do it that way. No way, right? I'm not typing out each and every cell reference. Crazy, right? So we're gonna see some other ways to be able to perform these calculations as well and streamline our efforts. But for now, again, we're building that foundation. We're getting each and every little step in there so that we know exactly what's going on inside of Excel. Get this done, get your calculations in there, add up those figures, then we'll jump into the next lecture and I wanna take calculations even a step further. All right, here we go.